Hi, welcome to Pink Heart Quilting and Embroidery. My name is Kit, and today I want to talk to you about a new quilt book that I've recently purchased that I found to have tons of quilt blocks and quilt blocks in multiple sizes, multiple projects, multiple layouts for the quilt blocks that I thought maybe you might enjoy seeing. So today we're going to talk about Farm Girl Vintage 2, which is a book by Lori Holt that is published by It's So Emma from the Fat Quarter Shop. We are going to talk about, we'll start by talking about the, um, the cover of the book and the quilt that is on the cover. This quilt is a sampler quilt and I will insert a picture of this quilt, a close-up picture here so that you can see it um, closer up. But this is a sampler quilt that includes 20 12 inch finished blocks and 36 inch finished blocks. Um, each block listed includes, an, includes cutting instructions for two sizes, the 12 inch or the six inch. So you really have the freedom to mix and match the quilt blocks any way that you like for your own quilt to make it more personal. Um, in my case, I chose, uh, I chose to start with the 12 inch blocks for the quilt. And again, I'm making two of these quilts. So for each block that I make, I'm in make I have been making two of the blocks and I've been trying to use different colors so that the two quilts, once they're done, will still have some uniqueness to them. They won't be two identical quilts. Um, so as you can see from these, um, we've kind of started with, we've started with my favorite, the blocks that I really liked the most when I started doing these. And you can see again that I've, I've used different fabrics in the different quilt blocks to, to show, um, some uniqueness between the two quilts. Um, the, the book includes 45 blocks in the first 125 pages of the, of the, the um, book. And again, the, each one of those blocks come with measuring, cutting instructions for, uh, let me see, there's one here. They will include cutting instructions for both sizes so that you can make any one of the 45 blocks 12 inch or 6 inch or repeat them in any way that, that you desire in the quilt. Um, some of the other things that I like about this particular book, well one is the pictures. It's full of beautiful pictures that, that, um, that are staged really well and they're really pretty pictures to look at so I enjoyed that. Um, but it's also got a unique spiral bound um, design that I believe is is uh, specific to uh, the Fat Quarter Shop and the It's So Emma and even to Lori Holt. I don't know that any of their other books include that feature. But as you can see, um, it folds back. It's easy to let the book, the pages will lay flat so that you can easily work on it and, and follow your instructions as you go along. So uh, let's dive in to some of the blocks and some of the designs that are in this block. So I I've taken one of the blocks. This particular one is the rooster on the um, on the cover in the cover quilt, and I, I've blocked out the specific instructions just out of respect for Lori and the Fat Quarter Shop. Um, but you can see here that there are that there are cutting instructions for the six-inch blocks and cutting instructions for the twelve-inch blocks, and the picture of the block is there. So in this one, you can see for every line on this, that represents at least one piece in the block. So you can see there's 30 plus pieces in this one block alone. So what I have been doing with this is one of the, one of the things that Lori Holt um, has designed are quilt design boards. And these are great boards when you want to cut out all of your pieces. These are the pieces for a particular block that I'm working on. And I have used just some old stickers that I had um, here at home to mark them so that I know which block is which. And if you are interested in how to make these, I have a video um, and I'll put a link to that video on the, in the description so that you can go to that particular um, 
video to see how to make those. They're also sold at Fat Quarter Shop um, by Lori Holt. So she makes, they sell them pre-made or you can DIY it and make them at home. I like making them at home because I like using my, um, my own fabrics, whatever fabrics I'm kind of into. And these are 10 inch blocks that I'm also using um, for the six inch squares. And you can see here that I'm using the Alpha Bitties, which is another product that Fat Quarter Shop sells to mark my pieces. And you can, you can definitely do multiple blocks at a time and stack them on top of each other and then take all of that to the sewing machine and sit and sew and piece those together all at one time if that is something that you like to do. So that's an option too. So for this rooster, once you've got all these cut out, then there are some really beautifully illustrated instructions on exactly how to piece everything together to get your final block put together. So, um, so that is how the blocks go together. Now, at the end of the section that includes all 45 blocks in two different sizes, there are instructions for putting this, this final quilt together. And each block has a border around it, has a narrow border around it. Um, so that border is my first tip. My first tip on this one is, when you're cutting the strips for the border, cut the strips a bit wider than the instructions call for. And then once you've sewn those on and pressed everything down, then measure the final size of each block so that when you get ready to assemble the rows in this particular quilt, all of them will perfectly fit. So that's, a, that's just a tip I would throw out there. The other thing, because these pieces are very much like a puzzle when you're putting them together, you saw there was quite a few pieces in your, your your end result is meant to be, you know, something that looks like a picture. I recommend that you um, have cut very precisely. Make sure that your size of, the, of your squares are exactly the measurement that is called for in the pattern. And secondly, I would recommend that you use a you you um, determine the a perfect quarter inch seam allowance on your machine. And sometimes you can use washi tape to ma mark your your sewing bed to make sure that you're getting a perfect quarter inch. If you do those two things, then these pieces will go together perfectly. They're, the measurements and the patterns are good. Everything fits perfectly if you follow those, those tips. So um, perfect quarter inch seam allowance if at all possible. Um, and making sure that um, you're cutting precisely. And then when you're putting those borders on, make those borders a little bit wider and then cut them down so that they'll be the, the right the right um, size when you get ready to do those. So the third tip that I would throw in here, and this is a Kimberly Jolly tip. Kimberly is um, owner of Fat Quarter Shop and she has YouTube videos and that kind of thing too. She, um, she actually starches all of her fabric before she actually starts cutting. And I found that to be very helpful. Now Kimberly uses can spray starch and she totally saturates each piece of fabric, lets it dry and then and then irons it afterwards. I found that holding the button on the, the can because I had I had dozens of fat quarters that I invested in for this particular project was a little bit um, hard on the fingers and you know the older older joints. So I chose to Use stay flow starch and you can control how much starch, how, how concentrated the starch is when you're using it. I did it about 50-50. Um, hung them out on um, dryers like, you know, uh, uh, clothing dryer racks. And I've got a picture that I'll, I'll stick in here of those, those fat quarters hanging on those racks in my driveway. Um, and then when those are all dry, bring them back in, put them on the iron, iron them all out, and then you have you have pieces of fabric that are now not gonna stretch and, and shift on you. They're gonna be nice and, and firm for you to work with. Um, so those are a couple of tips that I would put in there. Now, that, so that talks about the cover quilt and all of the blocks that go with the cover quilt. So next, let's talk about the next section where she has a Busy Bee Flower Girl quilt. And this is a quilt that is um, that has a block in it that's actually 33 inches by 60 inches. 
and it is a block that has a farm girl sitting in a farm truck at the top portion of the quilt and then the bottom are blocks from the original 45 blocks in the first section that are different variations of flowers that go into that so it looks like she's sitting in a farm truck in a flower garden it's really it's, it's really a nice picture and then you've got 45 squares in the first section 45 blocks times two sizes now you've got the busy bee girl quilt which is a large block paired with some more of the blocks from the first section and there's still another section that she calls as mix, miss and ma mix and match quilts where there are three additional blocks in two different sizes and those are the settings are used in a different way to create three additional or several additional um, types of quilts so um, definitely chocked full of ideas full of block patterns, full of multiple sizes. There's also um, mix and max pillow shams. And the thing that I thought was awesome about this particular section of the book is she uses squares from previous sections in the book, blocks from cre previous sections in the book, but then she adds borders to them to make pillows out of them. But she adds the borders in a way that they end up 20 by 26, which is the standard, um, the standard size for a standard pillow so no need to go out and buy special pillow forms or anything like that these these um, pillow shams will fit in your standard pillows which I thought was awesome I, I love that idea um, the next section is farm girl gingham quilts and that was let me see if I can locate that quickly um, because that was a section that I'm really excited to make some of the quilts related to that because let me see if I can show you the photograph that she includes. So these are gingham check quilts in different sizes and each size the blocks are are size proportional to the size of the quilt. So the very small quilts have very small blocks but then the largest quilts have large blocks and she has a table in there that well and here's another photograph of the quilts um, as she photographed them for the book. Um, and then there's a table, which I won't, there's a table there that shows you the different size quilts you can make and the, the block cutting instructions for making those. So that's the section that I'm excited to work on. Um, I think the gingham check and knowing that I can choose, as long as you've got a light, a dark and a medium, you can use any fabrics from any collections to make these quilts and they, they'd come out really great. Um, another section in here in the quilts is a barn star quilt. And I'll show you the photos. These are a single large block that are square. And these are reminiscent of, I don't know if you're familiar, but I've seen them in pictures and, and I, I would love to have a barn to put one on, but I don't. Um, but they are square blocks and they're reminiscent of the wooden quilt blocks that are, you can see on large barns sometimes. Um, I've only seen them in pictures, but they look awesome. So there's a section here that shows you how to make some of these square blocks, large square blocks that are reminiscent of that. Um, another section in the book. So as you can see there, this book is so full of, of um, patterns and and choices and ways to set the blocks and multiple blocks that it's definitely worth the cost of the book. So this section is all about doll quilts. So she makes doll quilts in three different sizes um, in different designs that she actually collects um, quilt, uh, quilt, she collects baby beds and she makes these quilts in the different sizes to fit those beds, including little pillows to go with those. So that's always, um, really cute and I love to see those and, and the pictures in the book are, are really awesome to show how this works and you get some practice working with some very small pieces when you work through the projects in this particular section. So that's another section in there and then in the final section these are different projects so they're they're using the quilt blocks that you've seen in the different sections, but they're making, you know, this is a framed picture that's sitting on a, on a setting on the table, another framed picture. There is a um, pin cushion that, uh, pin pillow she calls them with pockets, as well as um, um, uh, there's a couple of other projects in there. So 
that's another section for other kinds of ways that you can use the block patterns that are in the book throughout the book. So to sum it all up, this is a book that I have enjoyed working out of. I think the, the instructions for the blocks are very well written. They're very clear. Um, some of the blocks, I'll show you the one that gave me the most challenge, and maybe it was because it was one of the first blocks, but the horse block with the mane and the little tiny squares and all that, that was a block that was rather challenging. And sometimes when you're when you were sewing together some of these blocks, it would you would not be sure that it was really going to turn out the way it should. But have faith, continue on and follow the instructions. And at the end of the day, the puzzle comes together really well and ends up with a beautiful block. So that is kind of my summation of how many block designs and sizes can you get in a single quilt block? Well, I'm here to tell you at least 100. I think I've counted as we've gone through this, and I think there's at least 100 there. So I highly recommend the book, um, the instructions, the design of the book and how it folds. If this is something you think you would be interested in, I will put the link to Fat Quarter Shop in the description so that you can go over there and, and see the book. And also note that Lori has several other books that she has um, published with Fat Quarter Shop and It's So Emma. So you're welcome to take a look at those two. Um, I have one of the other books that I haven't started working on yet, but this is a, a book that I felt included my value for my money. This was something that I felt like I would make many, many, many projects out of this book. And even if I wanted to take some of these projects, I think I can take and use other fabric lines and other designers even and modernize some of them and give them a different a flavor a different uniqueness to them so i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please give uh, please like the video um, give it a thumbs up subscribe uh, hit the notification button and you will be notified when i load upload um, other videos thank you